Hello, in this video we're going to look at price ceilings. We're going to find consumer surplus, producer surplus, and the dead weight loss under a price ceiling. Um, and I'll also make a few extensions. So we're going to start with a battery market. The demand for batteries is given by this equation. And the supply of batteries is given by the equation right here. So we'll first have our benchmark where we have no price ceiling, so just a market outcome. So we'll set quantity demanded equal to quantity supplied. So setting those two equations equal to one another, collecting the price terms, so we get 10p, um, and uh, adding 20 to 100, we get 120, and we find an equilibrium price of $12. We'll take that price and we'll plug it back either into the demand or supply equation. So we see that the equilibrium quantity then is 40 units, 100 minus 60. Again, we could plug this $12 into the supply equation, and we'd also get an equilibrium quantity of 40. 5 times 12 is 60, minus 20 is 40. All right, so that's the market outcome, no price ceiling. Let's go to a price ceiling. For a price ceiling to have an effect, to be binding, to create a shortage, the price ceiling must be set below the market clearing price. In this case, uh, the price ceiling is $8, so it satisfies that condition. And at a price of $8, what would consumers like to buy? Well, plug $8 into the demand here, and consumers would like to buy 60 batteries, 100 minus 40. At a price ceiling of $8, how many batteries or how many units will sellers bring to the market? We'll evaluate the supply equation at a price of $8, so 5 times 8 minus 20. Sellers will only bring 20 units to the market. So we have a mismatch here. Consumers want to buy 60. Sellers are only offering 20 units for sale. So the shortage is quantity demanded minus quantity supplied, and that is 40 units. So we have a 40 unit shortage. So let's start looking at some of these things graphically. So I will first graph the market outcome. Uh, as we found, the equilibrium price without a price ceiling is $12. Equilibrium quantity is 40 So here's the demand curve. I graph the demand curve, which I have written over here. And the key when you're doing this graphically is to find these vertical intercepts. So the vertical intercept of the demand curve is found by uh, the method I'm laying out here. So set Q, the left-hand side, equal to 0. And we will solve for P. So doing that, we get P equals $20. Okay, so at a price of $20, Q is 0. So that's the vertical intercept. Um, now, since we're on the demand, let's do the horizontal intercept. Uh, this isn't quite as critical here, but I'll do it anyhow. So to find where the demand curve touches the quantity axis, the horizontal axis, uh, we will take our demand equation and set P equal to 0. And when you do that, Q is 100. All right, uh, one final thing is the supply curve. Okay, so here is the supply equation, Q equals 5P minus 20. Uh, the critical thing here, again, is to find this vertical intercept. And we'll do that by setting Q equal to 0 and solving for price. So we see that at a price of $4, quantity supply to zero. Uh, and then again, where demand intersects supply, we found that on the previous slide, equilibrium price of $12, quantity of 40. All right, the next thing I just want to do with the, the market outcome is find consumer surplus and producer surplus, and then we can compare these values to when the price ceiling is in effect. So consumer surplus, is going to be this area between the demand curve and the market price up to the last unit purchased, which is 40. So we've got this triangle, and we will use an area of a triangle, which is 1 half base times height, to calculate this. So that's where this 1 half is coming from. The area of a triangle is 1 half base times height. So 20 minus 12 and 40 minus 0 okay, is the the base of the triangle, and if we do the math here, we get $160 of consumer surplus. Producer surplus is going to be this area, which is going to be a triangle, 
between the market price and the supply curve. Okay. And again, uh, area of a triangle is one-half base times height. So putting in the dimensions here, we've got 12 minus 4, and then 40 minus 0. And that gives us a producer surplus of $160. And if we wanted total surplus, then in the market is just these two numbers added together, consumer surplus, producer surplus. So we get $320. Okay, moving on. So with the price ceiling, um, a few things. I'm first showing the market outcome, equilibrium price of 12 and equilibrium quantity of 40 as a reference. So the first thing we did with the price ceiling, we took the price ceiling, which is $8, and we plugged it into the supply equation and demand equation. When we plugged it into the demand equation, $8, we saw consumers would like to buy 60 units. Sellers, on the other hand, would only bring 20 units to the market. So plugging $8 into the supply equation, we found quantity supplied of 20. This horizontal distance between quantity demanded and quantity supplied is the shortage. And as we said, that's 40 units, 60 minus 20. All right, uh, one other thing that uh, is important here uh, before we calculate consumer surplus and producer surplus is this point up here. So what I did here is I just took this Q equals 20, and I plugged it into the demand curve. So when we do that, when we plug Q equals 20 into the demand curve, uh, setting Q equal to 20 and solving for P, P is $16. Okay, that's going to be important for us in calculating um, uh, consumer surplus. So let's move over to the next slide. And... We're calculating consumer surplus, producer surplus, the deadweight loss. So the, the key here is that the, the price at which these batteries are bought and sold now is $8, the price ceiling, and only 20 batteries are being bought and sold. So consumer surplus is going to be the red area. Once again, it's just going to be the difference between the height of the demand curve and the price that consumers are paying up to the last unit, the last battery purchased. So we've got this area here. And the only complexity here is that we're going to have to break this up into two areas uh, to make calculating consumer surplus easy. So we have a triangle up here and a rectangle down here. So we're going to get a dimension of these, this triangle and rectangle to calculate consumer surplus. So this triangle, and this is why I, I was pointing out that $16 on the last slide, this triangle has uh, dimensions of 20 minus 16 and 20 minus 0. Okay, and then again, triangle, it's one half base times height, so I have this 0.5 here. So that's the area of this triangle. And then we're going to add to it this area of this rectangle. And a rectangle is just width times length. So 16 minus 8 and 20 minus 0, so just 8 times 20 would give us the dimensions of the rectangle. So adding those two areas together, we see that consumer surplus here is $200. All right, moving on to producer surplus, it's going to be the blue area. Uh, this blue area is just this triangle here, this tiny triangle. The difference between the price ceiling price of $8 and the supply curve up to the last unit sold. So the dimensions of that triangle are given here. And this gives us producer surplus of $40. And once again, if we wanted to get total surplus, or some books would call it economic surplus, uh, we add 200 plus 40, and we get $240. And finally, let's go to the dead weight loss. The dead weight loss uh, is going to be this green area, which is a, tri which is a triangle. Okay, And uh, the dimensions of this triangle... 16 minus 8 and 40 minus 20. Okay, and so we have a dead weight loss of $80. And you'll notice that this dead weight loss also equals the reduction in total surplus going from the market outcome to the price ceiling outcome. With the market outcome, total surplus was $320. With the price ceiling, total surplus is $240. So 320 minus 240 is another way of backing into the dead weight loss. 
All right, let's do some extensions. Uh, the first extension. With the price ceiling, we assume that the batteries were bought by those with the highest willingness to pay. This is not a realistic assumption when you have a shortage. You're going to have queuing. People are going to be waiting in lines. Uh, some people uh, may have a very high willingness to pay, but they weren't first in line. And by the time they get to the front of the line, the, the good is no longer available. So let's assume battery buyers are a random selection of consumers between $20 and $8. So the highest willingness to pay can be given by the height of the demand curve at this intersection here, $20. And the lowest willingness to pay under the price ceiling would be $8. Yes, yeah, some people might only be willing to pay $7 for batteries, but under a price ceiling of $8, they won't, they won't wait in line. All right, so what we're going to do now is find the average value of uh, consumers' willingness to pay. So the average value of consumers' willingness to pay is just going to be the average of uh, 20 and 8, uh, which is $14. So consumer surplus under this scenario is going to be much lower. The average consumer's highest willingness to pay is going to be $14. What do they pay? $8. How many units do they buy? Buy 20. So consumer surplus in this case is only $120. Uh, this is even lower than under the market outcome. And one final extension. Uh, let's now assume a black market arises and producers can get paid under the table. So producers will only bring 20 units to the market under this price ceiling. That's what we already established. Let's assume if producers were able to auction off these 20 units, what is the most that they could get per unit? Well, take this $20, walk up to the demand curve, we get the maximum willingness to pay. So consumers' maximum willingness to pay per unit would be $16, and they would buy 20 units. So in this case, cons the producers can charge consumers the price ceiling price of $8 and then demand another $8 be paid under the table. Under this scenario, consumer surplus is going to be um, this little triangle up here. Okay, Consumers are paying $16, $8 to producers. Okay, uh, and then $8 under the table for 16 So consumer surplus will be this, um, uh, this tiny tri triangle up here given by these dimensions. So 4 times 20 is 80, and half of that, uh, I forgot to write it here, it's going to be $40. Okay, all right, uh, I hope you found this video helpful.